Simon, later on this morning, we will be discussing, I think, like you, I get information over the weekend on 777 Partners. And if anything, by the sounds of it, they're to be avoided by Mashiri and by Everton. Um, obviously, they, they will have their plus points. They will argue they have many plus points and positives. Things. They're two different things, but, Jim. Mashiri yeah. and Everton are two different things. Uh, Mashiri would like to leave Everton. If you believe that Mashiri's motivation will be what's best for Everton, um, there may well be an index there because if he's got a deal that carries on with some financing that gets him paid further down the line as a result of Everton's achievements, he'll be mod moderately mindful of that. But these guys that are trying to buy Everton are buying Everton because it's part of a portfolio of opportunities that create wealth for them, which in part you have to accept in this world of business and globalisation and the economics of sport. But I would be very careful. I would be very careful. I think the Premier League would be very careful. There are two stages to this deal. There's the agreement with Fahid Mashiri, and then there's the ability for this deal to be completed under the auspice and governance of the Premier League. Mm. You know, it's easy to, 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 to do a deal with Mashiri. He's, he wants to run away like Wiley, I, Wiley e. Coyote. He wants to get out of yes. it and don't be yes. under the illusion that he doesn't. Yeah. Um, and so when that deal gets done, we'll see what the Premier League is. But I, I, this, is a, this is the archetypal frying pan and fire mentality for Everton. It's that bad, is it? Well, um, I mean, I was I, I, what I heard over the weekend, and we may as well stick with this, Simon, at the moment. Uh, when you get a cautionary note like it's believed they don't have quotes real funds, they're not of a mind to build anything quotes real at the football club. I mean, those are red flags to say the very least. Well, you you check the source on that and make sure that the source doesn't have their own motivations. And, and I have a good understanding of who, who's been saying these things. But the point is, is that there's substance behind it. And when you're when you're buying football clubs or you're buying businesses and you're raising cash to do it through private equity methodologies, there's always the argument how much actual cash you've got of your own. You've got anyway. You look at how. Todd Bowley, with due respect to his incredible wealth, that wasn't Todd Bowley's money. It was a whole raft of private equity players' money. So the argument that they don't have real money, if they if they don't have real money, they won't complete a deal. They won't get past certain obstacles in terms of the funding requirements of the football club. But the motivation at the centre of it is primarily their own. And with that, you'd like to think that they drag the football club with them because if their motivations are their own, they need some level of success attached to it, which means Everton need to be moderately successful. Yeah. That success could simply be for them retaining Premier League, Premier League status, waiting for the stadium to complete and flipping it, which is what this feels like. So, I mean, again, enlighten me, Simon. Why would someone like Mashiri, who has enormous personal wealth and knows how to make money, why would he agree terms with 777? If we know what we know... He knows a hell of a lot more than we do about them. Well, he wants out. There's very little doubt he want, wants out. And so with that in mind, unless there's a huge list of potential suitors that want to buy a football club that requires significant funding on two fronts, one on the cash flow criteria they've got at this moment in time of the football club and the other with the cash calls required to build out the stadium. If you don't want any part of that, if you have now had enough and you've spent 500, 600 million pounds, whether it's your money or Usmanov's money or whoever else we want to allude to, if you've had enough and there are other aspects of your commercial life that are also under pressure, which may all also be the case, who knows, then you have no more appetite for it, then you're going to look for a solution. And if that solution looks like these guys, of course Fahid's going to turn around and say, I've got the best interest in Everton in mind. Yeah. Yeah. And that may well be directly relatable to a deal that gets done that gives him revenue further down the line, which might make him a little bit more concentrated. But this is more about Fahid Mashiri getting out of Everton than what is the right fit for Everton. What did you mean there? I've seen a couple of messages. Jim, pick up Sam. What does he mean by they want the stadium and then they'll flip it? They Listen, the opportunity to make money from football is is there. If you do the right deal at the right price with a limited amount of your own money in the deal and you can find a situation where you've got a better going concern than the one you've got now. Everton look like a basket case right now. They look like they're just about hanging on by their fingernails in terms of Premier League status. They've got a decent manager in the dugout, but they've got very little intellectual capital behind the scenes, which is holding them together, both at board level, with due respect to those in situ, and on the football operation side of things, supporting Sean in what he needs to be able to achieve. So it looks like Everton are about to hang on to their Premier League status by their fingernails. You've then got a stadium development that comes into play. All of a sudden, you've got a slightly more economically viable football club, better stadium, better facilities, better look, better infrastructure, better feel about it. 
then you can flip it. If you've put very little money in, you're servicing debt as a result of doing it, and someone comes along and fancies it a little bit more because the climate's changed I behind see. that football club, you've, you've, got got an oppo- you've got an opportunity to turn it quick. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that goes to show what the messages I've been getting, and I know you've been getting some <coughs> messages over the weekend about 7-7 Partners, that do they have any real, genuine interest in Everton Football Club? Probably not. It could have been any football club. Am I right? Well, they don't no, have any emotion in Everton, do they? No, but I would argue, and I would always you argue, had emotion this, in Palace. Well, that's by a, God, a, you did a whole different dynamic. Nigel Doherty had, had investment in Nottingham Forest. Most guys that own mm. football clubs have invest mm. have, have emotion in the investment they put in there, and subsequently become attached to it because it's a reflection of them. There's no way Sheikh Mansour was emotionally invested in Man City, and there's no way Todd Bowley is emotionally invested in Chelsea. They were invested in their particular agendas. Yes, Mansour's is whatever his is. Yeah, and Todd Bowley's is whatever his is. Todd Bowley's is a economic model. So, to some extent, it's not too dissimilar to Man United, except it's private equity money. Everyone's going, oh, Man United are loaded with debt. So to some extent, are Chelsea, because Chelsea are loaded with debt from a private equity firm that want to return on their money. Sure. They didn't buy Chelsea so they can just sit there losing two and a half billion and spending a billion pounds just because they feel like burning money. It's because they want an economic return, yeah, which will yeah. be at Chelsea's expense at some time. It's interesting, Martin, briefly listening to Simon about the Everton situation. If anyone worked for a football club as you did at Celtic under an owner as you did like Dermot Desmond Mm -hmm. there was the right owner at the right club there was a guy who'd do anything for that football club who loves his football club I met Dermot on a number of occasions that's the kind of owner any top manager wants isn't it? Uh, Well very much so I mean I didn't know Dermot at all until uh, until we got together Um, I think I mentioned to you before I got a a phone call uh, from Sir Alex Ferguson saying, would you have any interest in uh, going to Celtic? Of course, that was absolutely right. I would have done. And then, uh, but uh, Sir Alex knew Dermot and um, and he recommended me anyway. I think one of a couple of people at the time. And so I met Dermot for the mm. very first time on Monday. Uh, listen, I mean, very difficult to say no to him when he's when he's putting something in front of you. But he had a, a vision for the football club. That was the most important thing. Well, we all have visions. I think Simon had a vision when he took Crystal Palace over, or he certainly had, as he said, an emo- an emotional um, attachment. attachment to it. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. he grew up supporting them. Yeah. And um, so, but Dermot was always a big Celtic man. Yes. And therefore, he wanted to do. He obviously wanted to uh, have some success. And the the question remains on Everton, Martin, and we'll ask it this morning. What are Everton in the the modern Premier League era? I mean, are things on the field ever going to click, if you like, under Sean Dyche? Because they certainly didn't show much yesterday against Arsenal. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Friday mornings from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart. Speaker. Speaker. Talk sport.